you talk about, the, you know, you say coded languages. There's a part in the, early in the book where you, when you, at the beginning when you first get pulled up, where you are both trying to communicate that we need to throw, that you have a locker of alcohol. Yeah. Yeah, that was a complicated situation. I and mean, it felt, it, it felt like a movie. Like, I mean, I mean it, it was playing out like one. We're sitting there in our apartment, kind of separated. These guys have guns. There's a bunch of, of plainclothes security officers with surgical masks to hide their identity. People are filming. And, uh, and Yegi had this key to our, our, uh, our liquor closet. You know, Iran is, is a dry country, and it's very hard to, uh, to uh, get a hold of uh, libations. Yes, yes. And, um, you know, I said, ditch the key. And I, at some point, she, you know, she was able to convince the, uh, the guards that she had to go to the bathroom, and, you know, she flushed the key down the toilet. You know, she came out and, and you know, across the room, you know, gave me a, a wink, like, I did it. And I thought we were out of the woods at that point. <laughs> well, this and, will be over. And the, bo the booze never came up, right? You know, uh, so. And yet something uh, called suspiciously the Iranian avocado project. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, in my backyard here in, in, in San Rafael, we had an avocado tree that didn't, um, didn't produce a lot of fruit, but it was there. And, uh, you know, I've been making guacamole since I was a little kid and loving it for even longer. Uh, like a lot of people from around here. And uh, it was something that, that in Iran just didn't exist. There was no avocados. Uh, for those of you who are Iranian, I hope you can attest to your American friends who don't know much about the country that it's not just one big desert. Uh, you know, it's one of the great agricultural uh, centers of the world and has been for millennia. Uh, so I wanted to know why they don't grow avocados there. Uh, and I, I undertook a, a Kickstarter project and tried to raise money to do this. I was going to bring avocados to Iran and, or figure out why they weren't there already. And this is, just to be clear, this is before... This is in 2010. 2010. This is years before all this yeah. happened. Um, and I failed miserably in my quest to raise money. And that was that. Yeah. End, end of the story until the first interrogation. And that was their proof that I was the, the CIA station chief in Tehran. <laughs> I said, how did you guys come up with that? You know, I'm, I'm blindfolded sitting there. and said, this is code for something. We don't know what, <laughs> but you're going to tell us before you get out of here. And um, I, I laugh about it now, yeah. uh, but in that first encounter, I just thought to myself, that's not possible, right? <laughs> this is not possible. And uh, I, I heard uh, months later that um, when, I, when Yegi and I were still in prison, uh, my captors called uh, my in-laws home and said, uh, do you know that your son-in-law is the head of the avocado revolution? <laughs> and, and my mother-in-law was like, what the hell is an avocado? Because <laughs> there's no avocados in Iran. So, <sighs> yeah, it stuck. It stuck with, uh, with, uh, with, with uh, the charges against me for many months. They kept questioning me about it, quit questioning me for four or five months. Finally, they stopped questioning me about it. And then they would bring up new things. And they said, well, since we gave you a break on this avocado thing, we need to know about why you directed the Iranian happy video. You know, the Pharrell Williams oh, yeah, thing yeah, yeah. went viral. They said that I had directed the Iranian version. People who know me know that I don't know how to take a picture, let alone, you know, <laughs> a video. Um, so that was, it, it was, it was a su succession of, of these kinds of accusations that really didn't add up to much. Um, except keeping me pinned down for a very long time.